Hello, I'm James. Welcome to my channel. This video is all about solving quadratic equations by factorizing. So clearly you need to be able to factorize a quadratic and I do go through it briefly in this video, but if you're not already confident with it, it's probably worth checking out my other video, which is just all about factorizing. And I'll put a link to that in the description below. You can also see on the screen there all the questions that I do in this video. So if you want to, you can just jump to one particular type of question that you're stuck with. I've also put a bank of practice questions for you over at the Maths Kitchen website, and there's a link to that in the description below as well. Right, with all that said, let's have a look at the first question. Solve x squared, add 7x, add 12 is equal to zero. Okay, so we've got a quadratic equation here. So in order to solve it, we're gonna factorize that equation first of all. So to factorize it, we're looking for a pair of numbers that multiply together to make 12 and that add together to make seven. And sometimes you can just spot that and it's pretty easy. If not, you can just list the factors of 12. So we've got one times 12 is 12, two times six is 12, three times four is 12, and that is it. So three and four multiply to 12, they also add to seven. So that's our pair of numbers. So to factorize this, we get x add three multiplied by x add four, and it is equal to zero. In other words, we've got two numbers being multiplied together and it's giving us an answer of zero. And when we multiply two numbers together and get an answer of zero, the only way that can happen is if one of those numbers is zero. That's the only way you can times two numbers together and get zero. One of them has to be zero. So either x add three is equal to zero. And if x add three is equal to zero, if we subtract three from both sides, that tells us that x is equal to negative three. Or x add four is equal to zero. And if x as add four is equal to zero, we subtract four from both sides, tells us that x must be negative four. Solve x squared minus 7x add 10 is equal to zero. Okay, so we've got a negative here, but the method that we use is exactly the same as if all the numbers were positive. So we're gonna factorize this and we need to find a pair of numbers that multiply to 10 and that add together to make negative seven. So we could have one times 10, two times five. Now both of those pairs of numbers multiply to 10, but Definitely neither of those add together to make negative seven. And the only way that we can get a pair of numbers that when we multiply them, we get a positive answer. And when we add them together, we get a negative is if both of them are negative. So it could be negative one times negative 10. That will give us positive 10. And we could have negative two times negative five. That will also give us positive 10. And in fact, that last one will also add together to make negative seven. Okay. So it's going to factorize to this x minus 2 and x minus 5, and that is equal to 0. So either x minus 2 is equal to 0, x minus 2 is equal to 0. If we add 2 to both sides, that tells us that x is equal to 2. Or our second solution, x minus 5 is equal to 0, in which case x must be equal to to five, okay, those are our two solutions. X is equal to two, or X is equal to five. So we've got another variation here. X squared minus three X minus 10 is equal to zero. Okay, so we've got another example with some negatives here. We've got the negative three X and the negative 10. We're still gonna do the same thing. We're gonna find factors of the number on the end, in this case, negative 10 and we want those factors to add to negative three. So the factors of negative 10 could be negative one times 10, could be positive one times negative 10, it could be two, or let's say negative two times five, and it, we could have positive two and negative five. And if we add these pairs of numbers up, one of them will add to negative three, and it's this last one here. Two add negative five, makes negative three. So that will factorize to look like this, x add two and x minus five is equal to zero. Okay, and then just to the final couple of steps, we say that either x add two is equal to zero, in which case x is equal to negative two, or 
x minus 5 is equal to 0, in which case x will be equal to 5. So those are our two solutions for this one. So we've got another one here that involves a negative. It's negative 15, the constant on the end. Okay, so we want the factors of negative 15. It could be 1, negative 15, or negative 1 and positive 15. Or it could be, what else have we got? Um, 3 and negative 5. Or it could be negative 3 and positive 5. One of these pairs of numbers will add together to make 2. And that is this last pair here. Negative 3, add 5 is 2. So it's going to factorise to x minus 3 and x add 5. And that is equal to 0. So we say that either x minus 3 is equal to 0 uh, and therefore x is equal to 3 or x add 5 is equal to 0 in which case x is equal to negative 5. Solve 5x squared add 11x minus 12 is equal to 0. Okay, we've got more than one lot of x squared here. We've got 5x squared. So we use a slightly different technique to if we just had one lot of x squared. Here's what we do. We take the number on the end, in this case the negative 12, and we multiply it by the coefficient of x squared. In other words, the number of x squareds that you've got. In this case, 5. So negative 12 times 5 is negative 60. And now we look for the factors of negative 60 that also add to 11. So negative 60 could be, for example, negative 10 times 6. I can see that 15 times 4 is 60. And if we did 15 take away 4, that would make 11. So that's our pair of numbers, 15 and negative 4. Now, this is where it gets a bit different. So what we're going to do, first of all, we're just going to rewrite the equation We'll leave the 5x squared as it is, but we're going to break that 11x down into two parts. We're going to break it into 15x, a positive 15x, in other words, going to add 15x, and a negative 4x. Okay, 15x minus 4x is just 11x, so it's just another way of writing 11x. Take away 12 is equal to 0. Then we're going to break this up into two parts, so we're going to factorise each of them separately. So we are going to break up this part and then this part. And we're going to factorise them both. So this first one is going to factorise to, well, 5 is a common factor there. In fact, 5x is a common factor of 5x squared and 15x. So we can have 5x outside the bracket, and then inside, well, 5x times x would give us that 5x squared, and 5x times 3 would give us the 15x. Then we're going to do the same with this second one, negative 4x and 12. Uh, sorry, well, we could think of that as a negative 12. So negative 4 is a common factor of both of those. So negative 4 can go outside the bracket. Negative 4 times x would give us the negative 4x. And negative 4 times 3, positive 3, would give us that negative 12. And the key here, if you get a little bit confused with the negatives, just remember that these two numbers, the, the parts inside the bracket must always be the same. Okay, so you could start out like that if you prefer and write x plus three in the second bracket and then just work out what needs to go in front of that to, to make minus four x minus 12. Okay, by this stage, believe it or not, you're actually very nearly done. This whole thing will factorise to x add 3. Okay, that is just this part. That becomes one of the brackets, the x plus 3. And then in the second bracket, it's just the two bits that are left outside. So 5x and negative 4. So 5x minus 4. And from here, we solve it exactly like we would any other quadratic at this stage. So we say that either x add 3 is equal to 0, in which case x is equal to negative 3, or 5x minus 4 is equal to 0, in which case 5x would be equal to 4, x would be equal to 4 over 5, 
four fifths uh, as a decimal, that's 0.8. I'll write that here. So those are our two solutions. X is equal to negative three or X is equal to 0 0.8. Solve x squared is equal to 16. Well, this is actually very simple. All we need to do is take the square root of 16. But there's one little thing you need to look out for. x is equal to the square root of 16. Well, the square root of 16 is 4, but we also have a negative square root of 16. So x could also be equal to negative 4. Okay, because negative 4 times negative 4 also gives us 16. So you've got two solutions there. Solve x squared minus 3x is equal to 0. So we've got a quadratic equation, but it's not quite in the format that, that we are used to often seeing, where we have three parts, an x squared and then some x's and then a number on the end. This time it's just got two parts. And when you have that, you can factorize it into just one pair of brackets. And the common factors of x squared and negative 3x, well, x is the common factor there. So if we take that factor out, put x outside the bracket, well, x times x would give us the x squared, and then x times negative 3 would give us that negative 3x. That is equal to 0. And then this last step is, is really the same kind of logic as if you're solving a normal quadratic where you factorize it. So we'd say either the x is equal to 0, you know, the part outside the bracket, or x minus 3 is equal to 0, in which case x is equal to 3. So those are our two solutions. Solve x squared add 6x is equal to negative 8. Well, when we solve quadratics, we're used to them being equal to 0. And then we use that logic that one of the numbers must be equal to 0. So what we need to do when, when they're not equal to 0 is to rearrange them so that they are. And in this example, if we added 8 to both sides, we would get x squared, add 6x, add 8 is equal to 0. And then we're back to a pretty straightforward quadratic that we can solve. Uh, so we want the factors of 8 that are also going to add to 6. And that is 2 and 4. 2 times 4 is 8, 2 add 4 is 6. So that's going to factorize to x add 2 and x add 4 is equal to 0. And so either x add 2 is equal to 0, uh, in which case x is equal to negative 2, or x add 4 is equal to 0, in which case x is equal to negative 4. So those are two solutions there. So that's how you solve a quadratic equation by factorizing. Now, actually, you can't always factorize them. And if you can't, you need to solve them by either completing the square or by using the quadratic formula. And as soon as I've got videos on those, I'll put links to them up here and down in the description below. And as I always say at the end of these videos, it's really helpful if you want to improve your maths just to get stuck in and practice some on your own, which is why for all of these videos, there is a bank of practice questions over at my website, mathskitchen.com. There's a link to that in the description below. So I would head over there and practice some of these questions on your own. Right, thank you very much for joining me in this video. I hope you found it useful. If you did, maybe check out some of the other videos. As I say, get over to the website um, and I look forward to seeing you in another video.